why recruiters don't reply in Dubai. But if you continue to do the same thing day in, day out, you're going to get the same result. Like how much salary people get in different industries. Hey guys, welcome to my channel. I talk about life, work and business in Dubai. And today I have a guest, Trisha Chapman. You probably know already. <laughs> She's a career consultant. And today we're gonna talk about one of the hottest topics, why recruiters don't reply in Dubai. So, Trisha, please, can you tell us more about it? Yeah, <laughs> goodness, how long do we have? <laughs> no, people are desperate. <laughs> yeah, to be honest, I, I understand it's really frustrating. Um, you know, when, when you're trying to seek help, seek guidance, there's so much information out there and you're desperate or really, uh, you know, trying your best uh, from all ends and you're just not hearing back. So. I guess try to think of it from the other side. So what's happening from the recruiter's perspective? So in the UAE market, there's obviously quite a, a big talent pool. So you've got the likes of a lot of Europeans, Canadians trying to get here. You've got um, the likes of the Southeast Asia uh, side of the world trying to get here. And then you've already got the expats living in Dubai. So the talent pool is quite big compared to other countries which then when a job is posted, you've obviously got you know hundreds of applicants trying to seek that position. And when there's the talent pool so big, it becomes a recruiter's world. So what I mean by that is, you know, recruiters or hiring managers can pick and choose who and when they want to reply. So I guess in terms of um, the system, maybe not being able to cope with such demands. I mean, not a lot of programs have got automated emails set up. Um, it's usually you know a handful of people having to reply or having to um, answer their LinkedIn email boxes which you know as you can imagine they just flow through yeah. it's not the best organized system to be able to to respond to each and every applicant guys before we continue I want to say that if you've been looking for a job in Dubai but you have no success um, you feel frustrated Trisha can help you with your job search journey so Trisha please can you tell us what services you provide and how you can help be my pleasure I would absolutely love to be able to help you in unlocking your potential I'll be able to assist with all of the necessary tools for a successful job application so what does that mean a CV, an ATS compliant resume of course, LinkedIn optimization, cover letters, personal branding and showcasing how you can unlock your potential. And the most important question, do you help to connect with recruiters? Absolutely. So in all of my packages, you receive a list of all of the UAE recruiters here, as well as a list of available jobs. Oh, so I understand, obviously, the job seeker. I'm always in favor of the job seekers. But when you think of it from the recruiter side, you've literally got hundreds of inboxes and you're flooded with requests. So I guess it would be down to how you manage and how you specifically speak and communicate with those people that you're reaching out to. So, you know, make sure that your message is tailored. Um, don't just say, hi, ma'am. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, which I get quite frequently as well myself, you know. Um, don't automatically say, I'm hi, ma'am, I'm trying to get a job. You know, try to develop a rapport, try to get noticed, even pick up the phone. You know, I think people these days have forgotten the, the old school <laughs> strategies. But uh, is it still okay to call recruiters? Why because not? But I think usually you'll find a phone of the receptionist, not the recruiter, and I don't think that they will put you through. <laughs> the thing <laughs> is that if you, I, I can understand your point honestly, but if you continue to do the same thing day in, day out, you're going to get the same result. Yeah. So if 500 people email the same thing and no one rings, or no one uh, tries an alternative source, you're not going to stand out. So try to think outside the box, you know, maybe even presenting business cases or um, uh, reaching again to a couple of people within the company to try and get you on a call or uh, start liking, commenting on people's posts so that you get noticed over time. Yeah, a friend of mine, he told me a like, very interesting approach. So he has sent just DHL. Uh, like package to the CEO of the company <laughs> with his CV. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, it's just a creative way how to stand out. Because exactly. otherwise today it's very difficult. You just get through. buried in the, under yeah. the paperwork. Yeah. Even when I was posted, like I posted some vacancy long time back, I received like 100 applications within 10 minutes and I just don't have time to go through that. Exactly. And most of them are not relevant even. 100%. And it's so like, uh, you know, 
it just for me doesn't make sense to waste my time. Yes, so yes. it's You've easier to find things. someone from referrals. Hundred percent, and this is exactly what I'm trying to encourage people to do. So be strategic, be focused, articulate your message. Don't directly say, "Hi, ma'am, I need a job," or, "You know, hi, ma'am, you know, um, please help me with employment." Build a relationship, build a rapport, and try and get someone to help you with the foot in the door. Yeah, and um, also I think uh, it's important to have, as you said, ATS compliant CV, right? Because if the uh, company had the system, your CV just doesn't go through. So. Yeah, exactly. So, so maybe I'll just give you a brief background, background of the system. Mm -hmm. So, no boxes like text boxes. You know, don't have your resume in columns. Have it just as one big, um, you know, text block. Uh, for example, you would match the title, so if you're going for a finance manager, make sure that your title on your CV says finance manager, uh, not commercial director or commercial assistant, you know, match the titles. Um, and then ensure, of course, that you're incorporating the same skill sets that's requested from the job description into your resume. Because what will happen is, it's like when you type in, um, you know, coffee shops Dubai. You'll have on page one mm -hmm. all of the different coffee shops that's relevant to your location. And then so forth. Now, who goes to page 15 to search for the, the coffee shops? <laughs> no one. So it would be the same from the recruiters. You know, you wouldn't be going all the way back to page 15 to try and search the talent. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I've heard about the hidden job market. So what does it mean and how people can access it? Yeah, good question. Yeah. So the hidden job market is where the job is not advertised. So, you know, normally what we would do is you would go on to uh, Indeed or Glassdoor in LinkedIn and type in marketing manager and then you'd find all of the positions that's advertised. So the hidden job market is where there's positions available within the company but they're just not advertised on any platform. So how do you access these types of roles? So for example, you could be reaching out to hiring managers within the company, you know, human resources departments, or um, a commercial or a, or a business development manager, and doing, creating a gap analysis, you know, proactively saying, I've created SWOT analysis, gap analysis of the company, um, I can see that you've got your 2025 strategic direction, and here is how I could help you facilitate get there. Is there anything available for me either now or in the coming future? Uh, so just one other final example, um, so you know Dubai especially it's very it's a transient place so a lot of people are you know moving back home to their home countries obviously people have families and um, you know it's a it's an expat community so resignations are quite frequent so you could be always um, speaking with people you know developing those relationships with your ex-colleagues or uh, attending networking events and just getting a feel about the the market and learn of any upcoming vacancies so you know you might hear on the grapevine that the um, the marketing manager is going back home or going on maternity leave in six months so you know that a position is going to be coming so whether there's going to be you know a reshuffle within the organization but at least you are aware that there is something upcoming so get ready okay that was an interesting point and let's say I um send my CV, uh, they invited me for an interview. Can you share some tips and tricks? Absolutely, this could be a blog just, you know, <laughs> by itself alone. Um, so first of all, obviously, digital interviews are completely different to face-to-face. -to -face. Mm -hmm. So I think it would be important to, you know, be uh, identifying various tips and tricks for each. However, I'll just maybe just outline a couple, especially for digital, because uh, these days your first interview is uh, majority of the time is uh, a Zoom call, a Zoom or, call or yeah. yeah, for the initial meet and greet. Um, so you know, make sure that you've got good camera angles. Make sure that you've got the lighting um, appropriate. You know, you don't want the shadows coming in that you're completely blinded off the camera. Make sure that you know when you've got the screen in front of you, you've got that tiny little dot, and then you've got the screen. Yeah. So a lot of people will look at the person on the computer. Mm -hmm but so it doesn't actually resonate the same image from the camera. So it's important to be looking at the dot and not at the camera itself. Um, obviously, you know, the background, I know that we work at home, but you don't really want, you know, the, the kids screaming and the nanny in the background and, and everything for the first meet and greet. Yeah. Um, at the end of the day, if these things happen, it's life. Mm -hmm. um, but just try to be making sure environments uh, as, as, as quiet as possible and most importantly make sure that you understand the job description 
So really become familiar with what's being asked of you so that you can respond and, and showcase what is your unique selling proposition that is specifically for that job description. And what about, uh, should they do research about the company as well? Absolutely, yeah. So again, I, I know I just mentioned about business cases and the company strategy, but it's so important to be aligning your values, your skill sets to what the company is as well. Mm -hmm. So, you know, there's so many financial reports, companies place their FY30, FY50 strategy, you know, maybe they're trying to integrate uh, digitalization or big data uh, analytics, for example. Make sure that you are showcasing how can you drive their performance to that goal. Because mm -hmm. then it showcases that you're, you're a fit. So how do you do that? And it's with a STAR method. So I'm sure we could go into this in detail or I'm happy to, to, to um, work with your clients individually, but you know, making sure that you are showcasing using the STAR method, how you can do this. And many people, um, they are confused about how they should dress during an interview because it's a Muslim country and they think like it's very strict. So what do you think about it? Yeah, it's a good question because I think, you know, back in our home countries, it's kind of taboo. Oh my God, you know, no partying, no going out, no singlet tops. Yeah. Um, but at the end of the day, it's about respect. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you just make sure that, um, you know, your shoulders would be covered or you've got a nice collared shirt on. Um, I think sort of on an international scale that the dress code would probably be the same. Yeah. You wouldn't go to like an interview with a really low cut yeah. top or your singlet or, um, you know, neat casual um, or, or smart casual probably would be the preferred way. These days, not many people are having like the whole suit and tie. A formal yeah, I think it depends dress. on the industry. Exactly. If you work in finance or real estate, then you have a suit. But in digital marketing, most people wear just casual clothes. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, you know, it's not text like it's not. Um, you don't need a PhD degree <laughs> to, to yeah. work it out. Just look professional. You know. One of the most uh, popular questions that I receive, like how much salary people get in different industries. So can you recommend some resources or platforms where people can find this information? Absolutely, yeah. This is the number one question. I think, you know, people, they want to come to Dubai to make sure that they're earning the good salary. So um, I could probably name a few, but if I, be, if I can be completely honest, I've created just newly um, a complete salary guide to the UAE. I would love to give it for you, to you to be able, for your audience to be able to download. Awesome. <laughs> um, it's got you know the likes of finance managers, marketing, sales, healthcare, uh, all of the different categories. So I will give you this. You're more than welcome to download it. It's completely free, uh, and you can put it in the link. Yeah. So guys, you'll find the link in the description under this video. Okay, thank you very much, it was useful. So guys, um, if you want to find a job in Dubai, but you don't know what to start with, or you send your CV, but you don't hear back from recruiters, you can reach out to Trisha and she will help you to get a dream job in Dubai.